Hello everyone, George Packard, Family Lawn and Landscape, and today I just want to answer a couple of questions that uh, some of you guys have wrote in and wanted some answers to. Seemed a little bit lengthy, and so uh, rather than sit and type all this out, I thought I'd do a video on it because I do get it quite often. I get these same questions asked. So first thing uh, we're going to cover is, um, this is from Jamie and Kim. Says, just wanted to reach out, tell you, love your videos, are very informative. Thanks for all the time you put into them. I appreciate it. Do you have any way of getting money out of deadbeat companies? We have a couple that just refuse to pay. Well, that's pretty typical. I, I don't think there's a company out there that doesn't have that problem. Um, you know, if you're in business long enough, you're going to have that problem. You're going to run across it where people owe you money. Be it they fall on hard times or they were just out and out crooks and tried to you know, scam you, but either way, everybody does run into this, so you're not alone, first off. Um, I guess what I would tell you the first thing is, uh, you know, I constantly call them, I constantly harass them for the money, try to get it, visit their house, knock on the door, make sure it's during supper hours, evening hours, early in the morning, whenever it's most annoying to these people. So, I mean, they're obviously screwing you and they could care less, so what do you care what time you go there, you know what I mean? So that's what I would do right off the bat. I would head over there the, during those times uh, and just constantly harass them, constantly call them. Then uh, your next step would be small claims court. Now, I hate to say that, but you still, I'm, I don't know. I, everybody's going to go the other way with this. Everybody's got a different opinion, but I'm going to give you my opinion. I'll take them to small claims court anyway even though it cost me $100 because I want to get something on their record. So when they go to buy a house or they go to buy a car, people will hopefully look at this and see that these are scumbags and that they've been sued for money. So that shows you they're not a good person to deal with. So um, if I get screwed by somebody, I'm going to do everything I can to screw them back. Okay. So that being said, um, small claims, like I said, maybe it costs you $100 to get it done. Uh, it, it's different in every state. Just go to your, your local courthouse and, and ask for the small claims department and they'll tell you what you have to do to get them there. Okay. And basically you file your claim and then you're going to show up on a certain day and you're going to state your business and they're hopefully will show up and they'll state their business and then the judge will make a decision, you know, as to who's right and who's wrong. So, and if you're in the right, hopefully you have documentation and stuff that you can bring to court versus a he said, she said. Because if you get that, he said, she said, you know, example of that would be like, you're putting in a, a lawn for this guy and he asked you to do a whole nother section of lawn, but you didn't write it down in a, in a piece of paper. You didn't have a work order uh, submitted on that that he signed off on. That's a he said, she said. He's going to say, I never asked George to do that. And you're going to say, yes. Yeah, you did. Okay. That's a he said, she said. So you don't want that. Make sure you have documentation on your stuff before you take them to court because otherwise you're just throwing your money away again. Okay, collection companies would be another route that you should go into. Um, we have a collection company that we use that actually reports these people to the credit bureaus. So not all these collection companies do it. As a matter of fact, 99% of them don't do it. This one company that we use actually sends their information to the credit bureaus. It costs money to do it, so they charge us. I think we pay $25 or $30, or maybe it's even $20, somewhere between $20 and $30, um, that we pay for every name that we send them, okay? So any issues that we have collecting money, um, I pay that money, and you may say, well, why throw away good money after bad? Well, it's because I believe in the principle of the thing. I want to ding this guy, and I'm going to ding this guy. So the next time he goes to buy a house or he goes to buy a car or something, I'm going to have a credit ding on that, his report. So I'm going to drop his credit score. It's going to affect him. And uh, before they're able to do those things and, and go get their car or their house or whatnot, a lot of times they have to rectify this. A bank will make them rectify anything that's outstanding like that. So we've gotten paid just because of that fact already. So um, if that's something that, you know, you guys would like, you can always get a hold of us and we can let you know what company we use. And if you want to use them, go ahead and use them. All else fails, Roundup Chronicles. I've said it a million times. Accidentally, you could always, well, before you go to the Roundup Chronicles, 
You could always spray paint things, like uh, especially if they have a big white garage door, come in the middle of the night and spray, pay your bills, you deadbeat bastard. You could put that on there, so make sure you spell it right. And then spray paint that, usually in black, that stands out the most, So especially on a white garage door. So color contrasting is very important. Look at the color of the garage door, that will determine the color of your paint. Okay. Also, I want to point out, make sure you don't put it on too heavy because then it runs. And when it runs down, it's going to run into the other letters beneath it and it looks terrible. So, practice on some cardboard sheets at home prior to your, your job. Make sure you have a nice little light uh, on your, your hat or something so that you can see what you're doing and do a good job of it. Don't try and do it in the dark because I can tell you from experience that you will not spell it correctly or it will bleed in one letter will bleed into the other. So I'm just telling you, don't do it. The other thing, final option is the Roundup Chronicles, which I do prefer using. And I have an actual suit. looks like a ninja suit. It's black. It's beautiful. And you put it on at night. And I also have a special backpack sprayer that also has the same color tones to it. Basically, you're unnoticeable. I keep it nice and lubed up good so there's no squeaky squeaky when you're pumping the handle, no nothing. And shh, accidentally spill about, I don't know, four gallons of Roundup on their lawn. And that seems to take care of it, at least from my perspective anyway. You may not get all the money from them, but it's going to cost a lot of money to repair that lawn. So anyway, that being said, we should move on to the next question and answer thingy. Okay. This is from Craig. It says, I enjoy your YouTube videos. It's obvious you're very experienced. I need some advice. I'm a college student that wants to mow and weed eat yards for extra money. Uh, when I get my first student loan, I'll have about $4,400 to get equipment with. I have nothing right now, not even a receiver hitch and utility trailer to tow behind my 96 Mustang. It's obvious I need some kind of riding, standing mower, push mower, weed eaters, and leaf blower. I plan on purchasing used equipment where I can cut down on costs. I am asking for advice on what brands to get. Or do brands even matter on lawnmowers? What do you look for? Lawn tractor, stand on mower, question mark. Um, if you were starting from scratch and you had $4,400 to start with, what would you get? Or if, or if you have a video that already covers your startup equipment, please provide it. Well, I've done a lot of videos on this stuff, but I'm just going to touch base real quick on what I what I would do personally is get a truck and trailer um, when you only have forty four hundred dollars you can't go get a brand new truck you can't get a uh, you shouldn't get a brand new trailer you should you should be definitely used everything here but the 99 Mustang that ain't gonna cut it um, I would get a truck and a trailer so at least you, with your truck you can put um, until you get some money to put some racks on your trailer or things of that nature or build a truck like our trucks um, you need to start out with a, just a cheap truck and a trailer. Go get a Ford Ranger or something or some kind of a smaller type vehicle, okay? Um, and then get a, get a small trailer to pull behind it. Now, on your lawns, it really depends on the size of them. So it's a tough question to answer because I don't know what to tell you. Are you dealing with lawns like we are in Wisconsin that are two and three acre lawns? Because if you are, you need to have a big riding mower or at least a mid-sized riding mower to do that kind of stuff. You don't want to be on a stand-on mower uh, doing two acres of lawn versus uh, in Florida where you're doing an eighth of an acre or a quarter of an acre, okay? Um, those things are smaller lawns, so we use stand-on mowers to do that. There again, they were 6,300 bucks new, okay? Um, used, I didn't even price them. I'm sure they're half that amount, somewhere in there. But keep in mind, you have forty-four hundred dollars. You got to watch every penny. You got to get truck. You're going to spend three grand on a truck, probably, or twenty-five hundred. Then you got to buy a trailer. Then you got to buy more. If they're really small yards, you can get by with a push mower. Make sure you get a self-propelled because you don't want to be actually just pushing them. You're going to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger by the time you're done um, doing that because that's that shit gets old. But um, at least get a self-propelled one. Um, I haven't priced them in a long time, but you know, I'm sure they're reasonable, 250, 350, somewhere in there, I would guess. Um, and that's for like a new one. So, you know, go price them. See what you have in your town. Um, I can tell you, I stand by my Gravely mowers. I really like the Gravelys. Um, I haven't found any to be better than that yet. Um, so that's, you know, brands do matter. Um, I prefer steel and echo equipment. I just think it lasts way better than you know, you, some of your other store-bought big box store stuff, you know. 
Um, you go in there and you buy some of those cheap trimmers and whatnot, and they don't last very long at all. And then, you know, you're constantly having to, to rebuy them. You know, the more jobs you get, the more you use the stuff. So anyway, that's that. Uh, the brands, I prefer Gravely Steel and Echo. And uh, hopefully that shed a little, little light on some of your questions. And I appreciate your time. Sorry I've been gone for a while, guys. I've been had extremely busy summer here. A lot of unexpected things have come up, so been dealing with a lot of stuff. Anyway, this has been George Packard, Family Lawn and Landscape. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe, and we also archive all of our videos on our websites, and those links are below. Thanks for watching.